Okay, our next step that these now are in half is that we have a controllable couple pieces of wood here. Again, you know, band sawing would have been a good alternative when dealing with something with that much of a cup or a jigsaw. But we now have something that's going to sit on the saw and be stable. But we still have some issues here. The first issue is, is that now at this stage of the game, we could go and plane these or put them across a joiner and face join them. But one of the issues we have, this thing is nowhere close to square. And that has to do with the fact that when it was sitting on here in that cup, and again, this is another reason for making sure you oversize. Now we're at five and a quarter inches, so now I'm going to split that and go at two and an eighth, actually two and a sixteenth. That's going to take care of the blade. I'm not thinking. It's not two and an eighth. It's two and five eighths. And again, I'm going to drop back to two and nine sixteenths for the blade. I just want to half it. Okay, why so wide? Well, when you've got a wide board like that, with inside of that board, and you never know, there can be stress. So the rule is sneak up on it. And so as we're cutting these posts, we're releasing stress. And I know if you've ever cut a board and you're going down and you see that board just open up, or you see that board pinch, that's because you're releasing stress in there. So what you want to do is you want to ease into your post. The other reason for the width is because we had the big cup in this one and we've got all of these sides that are now so messed up because of that angle. It's, you know, we've got to do, see that one's not so bad, but see, you can see this one, it's not so bad. Where is it at? Yeah, but see coming in from this side, I know we're close to square and I've got to have room to be able to square this up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm at two and nine sixteenths. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to make absolutely dead sure that my saw blade is set at 90 degrees. And it is. Let me double check here, make sure I'm right on the stop. Okay, I'm at 90 degrees. Now here, here again, if you have a joiner, you could just go join it. But you still want to rip all of this apart before you do. Because you want to release any tension and any pressure in there and give yourself enough room to be able to come back and mill a nice straight post. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I want to see what is my straightest side. Boy, that one's nice. You got to see this one. Talk about that width thing. See, once we got down to the two pieces, what near, we're not getting near the deflection that we were originally, see? But notice something, we're still maintaining our thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at about two and a quarter. Now this is my straightest side. 
I'm checking this. Th this is pretty close to square. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So this is going to be on the bottom and this is to the fence. Now what I want to do is I want to use this as my indexable surface. Again, I'm still not going to size. What I want to do now is I want to turn it and cut it lengthways. But I want to look down this and what I'm seeing is this has got a little bit of a bow this way. So again, I want to go point to point. And in this case, I've got a nice long fence. But if you need it to, using the jig to simply make that fence longer is going to give you the straightest cut. So I'm going to have to move down to two inches. Okay, I now have two square sides. Okay, I'm going to go do the others. We'll be right back. All right. Now, I just want you all to notice I've got sawdust because I've got my overhead dust collection on this removed so you can see what we're doing. So this actually is a case of removed for photographic, what's the term? Removed for photographic clarity. Make sure you use your guards, guys. And gals. Okay. What I've done now, I have four posts cut, and on each post I have two square sides, two indexable points. Now I need to bring that into four sides. So here's what we're going to do. This is squared to this. So we're just simply going to use this to cut this side, then turn it and hit this side. Now, I'm going to go hit the sides. I was at two and a quarter. I'm now dropping down to about two and an eighth. Now, on this cut, because again, this is their thickness, and we've trued to one side. This is showing me at this end that I'm at 1 and 15 sixteenths. But there's something I want you to notice. We're not trying to go to size even yet. As soon as we make this cut, we'll see why. All right, now here's what we have. 
Let's think about this a minute. We've taken this big piece of poplar and we've opened it all up. Now this wood is kill dried. You know, kill drying is like baking bread or a cake or something. No matter what you do, that bread isn't going to get as done on the inside as it is the out. Well, not supposed to anyway. How many of you ever had your mama want to smack you because you didn't close up the loaf of bread? And what does she tell you? It's going to dry out. Mama didn't want that loaf of bread drying out because she understood something about wood, even though she didn't know it. What we've done is we've opened all of this wood up, and no matter what you do, the inside of this is not as dry as the outside. Well, now that we've removed the crust and opened it up, guess what's going to happen? You got it. It's going to dry out. Just like not putting that top back on that, twisting that bread back. And that's a good thing, because that's what we want. We want our wood as stable as we can get it. Now, as you've noticed, we're wider than we are thick. Here's why. The width in this is where the most of the moisture is going to be. You know, the top and bottom of it is going to dry out. It's that inside. And what's going to happen is those sides dry, they're going to pull. As the moisture releases, it's going to shrink. You know, it could just be a one or two percent difference. It doesn't take much. And that wood's going to move. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lay these out and just let them acclimate adjust to their environment. They're still big and they're still thick. So if we let that happen and we let them adjust, then when we take them to full size, we're not going to have issues. Acclimation of wood, very, very important. You want to take your wood when you get it from a mill and you want to skim plane it lightly, again, take the crust off, or if in case of heavy wood, rough cut it to size and let it further dry out and acclimate. That will give you the most soundest wood and that, is that you can get straight and remain straight. That's a big key. Now, don't stack it on concrete unless you put down some plastic or something. And if you do, make sure you put something under it so air can move around it fully. The best way to do it is just lay some stickers on it and put it up somewhere to dry. How long? You know, two or three days, a week, but let it dry. So as you can see, in this step, in this phase of building the pie safe, we're fixing to build one. We're getting everything ready. So the first thing we wanted to do was get our post cut and opened up. Now what, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do the, other two, the wood for the other two so we do the same thing. Then we're going to go look at skim planing some wood, get it ready, and we're going to start looking at gluing up some shelves and stuff. Again, thinking ahead, prepping ahead, giving our wood plenty of time to acclimate, adjust to its environment. There's nothing anybody can ever tell you that's going to help you anymore. Especially, you know, you see a hardwood guy installs hardwood floors in a house. He wants all that wood taken in and left in that house for a while. So it acclimates to the environment. And if he's doing it in the winter, he wants the heat on. And if he's doing it in the summer, he wants the air conditioner on. He wants, that, he wants that wood to acclimate to the life it's going to live. You can put these posts under the bed. Just don't tell nobody. Good place. Okay, we're now in the back of my shop. 
and we've planed all of our wood and we've got our wood is pretty much acclimated but many times I particularly with guys who just have a little small lunchbox planer or whatever one of the things with a planer a planer will take a piece of wood it's what's used for dimensioning lumber getting everything to an equal thickness unlike the joiner again the joiner is designed for straightening but oftentimes we run into something where the joiner is too small and there's many different ways of doing it and we'll look at that in a little bit here's a we affectionately refer to this as a planer dog that's this jig and I'm gonna show it to you in a minute here's a piece of maple and we've definitely got a twist in it now easy way to, another way of doing it of course is like I said just to hand plane the corners and we'll look at that but here's a here's a trick if you look at the planer dog this is wide enough that it'll go through a lunchbox planer and you can make it any length you want it's simply made out of MDF and on the back of it it's ribbed kind of like a torsion box so that it's good and strong and it's dead flat so what this is going to do is create us a platform you notice up here on this end we have a cleat that's higher than the sled itself that acts as a stop so that the board can't come off the end of it if you have something really bad maybe adding a little double face tape or something might not be a bad idea but here's the here's the essence of what's going to happen if I take this board and it's twisted I want to go to the opposing corners the low corner and I want to equalize this to where this board is setting flat this board is setting stable I don't want it rocking so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little shim, just a little piece of wood, and I'm going to tape it onto the corner. You may have to experiment and play a little bit with your thickness to get it right. Now the other thing we're going to look at is, you know, we talked about those boards that are bowed over the long over the length that can be very difficult to deal with and we're going to look at that all right we need just a little bit more Now the other thing that makes the planer dog work nice is that by these just being taped on, unlike if I was just trying to put it through the planer with just these, odds are the planer, the bed of the planer would drag these off. In this case, the board itself is not moving. It's, it's resting on the planer dog and it's the carrier. All right, see, see, I'm not rocking. But I also have an issue. This has also got a little bit of that in it. And you can see the space in here. Now this is not great, but it's there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another little longer shim and I'm simply gonna get under here. There we go. Now, here's what happens. Planers, we have an in feed and an out feed roller. And these things press down and pull the board through. They press down so much that they will actually press this board flat and plane it. It'll come out of the planer still with the bow in it, but planed. 
Same thing happens with a cup. If this board had a, a, a big cup in it, what would we want to do? You're right. We want to put some shims under this board so that it can't move. We now have a rigid, solid surface. When we plane it, we're going to create a level platform. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, we have now, even though we've not, we're not completely clean on this side, we have created a flat level surface that we can now index off of. And we've straightened our board. Now you're going to see some areas up here. That's where the board itself has still got some the edges aren't clean but what's going to happen is when this goes when we finish planning this we're going to have a good flat level board okay we're going to go back up to the front of the shop and look at some other ways of taking care of this okay when you're if you have a joiner that is wide enough to be able to do a face joint then we can get twists and cup and whatever out with it. And one of the mistakes I see people make with the joiner, particularly on a face, and especially if it has a bow in it, is they push down really hard in the middle. When you do that, you're doing exactly what we talked about. You're causing, you, you, you know, you, you're joining it, but you know, you're not getting it straight. When you're joining it, again, just as when we're doing an edge, we want our point to point. In other words, we want the space, if we've got, we don't, again, we don't want to try to join it on the, on the bottom of the bow. If we do that, then again, we're just going to track. Make sure when you're joining it, you keep, your, you keep your pressure on the back of the board and on the front of the board the very best you can. Avoid pushing down and trying to push the bow out. Because then, by doing it that way, you actually straighten the board. Okay, the last way, and a good way of doing it, is with a hand plane. So let's go look at it. If you take a look at this piece of poplar laying up here, you can obviously see we got some issues. And of course, you try to avoid material like this, you know, ever how, the best you can. 
but sometimes it's once you skim plane it and it acclimates you can buy the straightest of wood and it can move the secret to this is on something like this is to work it in as short of piece as you can if we were going to use this to say make a top of a door or one of the rails here or in this case a side panel if I take this the end of that board and let's just I'm just going to go to full width that's 17 inches if I cut this 17 18 inches then this is going to lay down a whole lot more I'm not going to have near this much issue so trying to work this piece of wood in this long of length is futile you know you, you might get it flat and straight but the issue is going to be is that you're actually going to wind up with not much wood so again just as we looked at with that cup of letting that cup come down and bringing it together or, or working our post out same thing applies here let's go with the shortest length we can I'm gonna cut this we'll come back and look at it okay with the end of that piece of poplar cut while we still have some rock we don't have near what we had nowhere close and this is something we can work out but what we want to do is we want to make sure we mark our high corner which is the corner that's on the table these are the two corners and what we got to do is bring these two corners down to match the two that are elevated which is going to be this corner and this corner it's always the opposing by simply taking a hand plane and working these down Now, you notice I'm coming all the way across the middle of the board. And that's because that twist will carry through the middle. It's not just a simple matter of the very outer corners usually. Still a ways to go. Now oftentimes you can still get, if you've got a cup, you can still get a rock. So I like to run across it flat, straight across. And again, it's just a matter of playing a little, check a little. We've got just a little bit more. And once we've established that level surface, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be level. As you go from corner to corner, spread it out. The longer the plane, the easier, the better. Now, we're not rocking. So now we've created a surface that we can index off of on our planer. We put this side down, go through on a light pass, and the planer's gonna mirror image that side to this side. Straight, flat, and level. Here's the piece of maple we did back in the planer. I went ahead and just finished planing it. And 
like I said, we don't have any rock. We don't have anything. We've got a flat, nice level surface. There's a little area on this edge that's got a little bit of, it didn't quite clean up at the thickness, but that happens. But we're straight. We now have a piece of usable, workable wood. That's basically some tips and things on being able to get your wood ready to build with. Okay, what's coming up next is our wood is acclimated. Now, I want to go ahead and get glued up for my shelves. So they're drying and, and being ready. And I want that glue to dry well. Now, one of the things we're going to be doing, and again, I'm addressing those of you who have, you know, the 12 and 13 inch, you know, um, lunchbox planters. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to glue our, our shelves up with our wood as thick as possible. Now why is that? In the case of this oak right here, we glued it up thick and we had all kind of cupping and twisting and all going on. But we used the glue up to help get it that level platform. Then we simply cut it in half to where we had a workable width we could work with. Now we glue it back together. Once we had cut it in half, of course, we planed it and got it straight. Now all we'll have to worry about is one glue seam in the middle to clean up. But we have a nice, flat, non-rocking panel. One last thing. And we're going to have to go to the table saw for that. Okay, here's that piece of, the end of that piece of poplar we were using to make the post. And we've got that big cup. Now, like I said, we could plane this out. And because of the thickness of the poplar, the two inches, odds are we could get this out without using a planer dog. Because it's thick and heavy enough that the planer's not going to push it down. But, as we talked about earlier, we're going to wind up with not a lot of wood. So, as with the post where we split it, in this case, I need some wood for our cross pieces. So, I just want to get this cup out. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find me a center here. Now we already looked at where it pinched when we tried to do it, when we did it on the table saw. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the band saw. And we're just going to cut it close as we can. Now, you can see on the end how much we've got. So now, indexing off of my sawn side, I'm going to true the outer edge.
Now let's look at now, now let's look at what we did. We trued the outside, came back, which mirror image did to be the same as what we had sawn on the bandsaw. That's so we don't have to take any more out of the middle than we absolutely have to, so that we get as nice a grain match and glue sink. But now when we put this together, back together, and I've got to tweak this seam a little bit, but what we've got, I've got to take a little bit more off this one, and I know that. But what we're going to have is, we're now down to a thickness that when we process this out, we're not going to lose our thickness. Yes, we've created another glue seam, but it was either that or we wouldn't, we'd have lost the whole piece. We would not have been able to maintain the thickness that we want to. Okay. 